Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're back, we're live. We are young talents making way on here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Andrea Gabrielli, I'm your host. And every Tuesday, we keep an eye on the future with our most brilliant school students as we talk about their science project. And joining me today is uh, uh, Jenna Kim from Roosevelt High School, who will help us to understand more about a very common, but yet not so well-known disease which can affect people here in Hawaii, the lungworm infection. Welcome to the show, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you it's for It's very nice me. to have you here. Thank you for having me. Um, so, uh, this is a very um, current uh, piece of news, if you want. We've mm -hmm. been hearing about this in the news, uh, and also the University of Hawaii at Hilo got yes. some funding mm -hmm. uh, about this. Uh, but uh, uh, why did you actually get uh, interested in this uh, topic? As we said, it's not very common. Mm -hmm. um, I chose this particular topic because uh, I noticed an increased prevalence of rat lung disease cases all across the state. Um, there's more news reports, um, commercials on TV. So I, w um, I immediately understood that this was a serious topic. So I wondered um, if people actually were um, people actually knew about this disease and wondered if there was a possibility that maybe if more people knew about it, then there wouldn't be as many cases. And we're here today exactly to bring awareness regarding mm -hmm. this. Um, so just to get us more uh, familiar with this disease, mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us more about uh, what actually is this sure. lungworm disease? And I believe we have a slide uh, that you brought us here. Yeah. For, for, uh, for uh, Okay, so yeah, what is it? Right, uh, so rat lungworm disease is caused by a roundworm parasite called Angiostrongylus cantonensis. Uh, That's the one we're looking at, the, the yes. long one in the, right. yeah. Um, so it originates in rats, who are the definitive host, and um, the parasite replicates in the rats and is passed through their feces. And then uh, when slugs or snails either pass over them or ingest them, uh, the feces. The feces from yes, the rats. Yes, they yeah. become infected. And um, humans are accidental hosts who become accidentally infected when they um, consume raw or undercooked snails or slugs, um, as well as some paratenic animals, such as crabs or freshwater shrimp that might also be infected. What are the symptoms of this disease? Um, so people usually present with um, headaches, neck stiffness, nausea, um, but in more severe cases can have um, neurological disorders, coma, and even death. And, and so that's a serious concern. Right. And you mentioned that uh, the problem here in Hawaii is that that we have an increasing number of cases yes. every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we have a slide to actually show this increase mm -hmm. in numbers that you brought us. Okay, here. Um, so, yeah, we are looking at this increase. Yes, so um, you can see that over the past 10 years or so, um, the numbers have been increasing. And in 2017, we had the most number of cases with um, 16 or um, 17 cases just last year. So, um, uh, this, is, this seems to be a problem as these numbers increase, yes. but um, w so you mentioned your, pro your project, your science project for the Hawaii State mm -hmm. Science and Engineering Fair was to try and uh, see whether people are aware of this problem. Yes, so I wanted to know whether people had heard about this disease as well as how much they actually knew about this disease. Um, so I designed a survey of 10 questions and asked 150 people how much they knew about this disease. And let's see uh, another slide for more uh, information regarding yes. this project. Okay, so here we're looking at the demographics of Correct. your study. Yes. Yeah. So um, basically we got 150 people um, with 50 people, I mean, sorry, excuse me, 30 yeah. people per age range. Um, okay. And so we also were able to get a generally even amount of males and females, and most of whom lived in Hawaii. In uh, Honolulu? Uh, sorry, excuse me, yes. Okay, that's, that's what we're, okay. Um, let's see a, another slide so we can understand more mm -hmm. about them. Okay, so here we're looking at the, uh, two graphs regarding two questions that were part of your yes. survey. 
Yeah. Yes. So these um, questions asked, um, do you regularly consume locally grown fruits and vegetables, as well as where most people get their fruits and vegetables? And I asked these questions because I wanted to know um, what people's normal habits were, um, because this could give us an idea of who um, rat lung disease uh, could eff affect the most. And a majority of people said that they do lo regularly consume locally grown fruits and vegetables, which makes this um, a pretty significant topic because I feel that rat lungworm disease could um, is more easily transferred um, by locally grown fruits and vegetables. So how do we actually, um, how do people get mm -hmm. affected with this infection? Yes, so... Because um, you mentioned it's for uh, snails and slugs. Mm -hmm. So um, um, besides, other than eating the snails or slugs themselves intentionally, um, most people get infected by consuming um, basically vegetables, produce, or um, vegetables or fruits that have the slugs or snails on them themselves. And um, when you don't wash them or cook them enough, um, then sometimes you actually have snails or slugs or parts of them on the vegetables and you accidentally ingest them. Oh, okay. So that's how humans come in contact with this. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see some more slides so we can understand more about mm -hmm. the, the questions that you uh, were asking them. Okay, okay so we, here we have two more. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. So these are two more questions. Um, I wanted to know in one question whether people actually take preventative measures towards becoming infected. And what I found was that a majority of people do believe or do say that they um, actively take preventative measures towards which this. Which is good. Which yeah. is great. Um, so then I wanted to know, okay, um, um, how are they preventing their um, rat lung disease, basically? So then I asked, how do you wash your fruits and vegetables? That's the key yes. question, yeah. Um, so a majority of people said water, which is just um, soaking mainly, um, but only about 35 people correctly specified running water as their method of washing. Why is running water uh, the most uh, the most uh, effective. the better yeah the yes. most effective so um, running water is base is the most effective method of washing because basically the force of the water is what dislodges um, any slugs or snails from your produce and that's how you prevent from becoming infected and it's not only salad though leaves so leafy vegetables mm -hmm. but any any anything really. yes but um, you should pay more attention to leafy vegetables to leafy vegetables yes. yeah. and um, if we could visit the slide again um, Something that's interesting is that um, a handful of people specified soap or salt, um, some kind of solution yeah, to wash so their vegetables. Yeah, so you can maybe disinfect or... Right. Um, so this is a popular, um, I guess, notion that most people think would be effective, but in actuality, um, I believe that it's not actually proven to be effective. So um, I think you should absolutely do it if it makes you feel more comfortable with um, eating your produce, but um, just know that running water is the most effective, so you should do that. Okay, but this is something that um, some people, uh, you know, we're bringing awareness to everybody about uh, this disease. Uh, but I guess one question might be, you know, for lunch, for example, if I go outside mm -hmm. and, you know, I have a salad or right. uh, should I really have it, you um, know, in yeah. terms of... <laughs> no, absolutely you should. Um, most restaurants and um, basically anywhere that serves food should properly wash their vegetables. It's more... Um, just at home, if you want to be extra cautious, just um, make sure you rinse your vegetables, inspect them. Um, and if you have a home garden, um, just be careful to make sure that there's no slugs or snails on them. Uh, what about uh, uh, shrimps or crabs you mentioned? Right. We should not eat the uh, raw fish, is it more? Um, so it's not fish. Um, fish don't actually carry the parasite, but it's more um, freshwater shrimp, crabs, um, as you mentioned. But um, those are peritonic animals, so they don't actually, the parasite doesn't actually live in them or they're not supposed to. It's just if- They um, might come in contact right, with- Right, exactly. So for those, you should just carefully um, cook them, make sure they're thoroughly cooked and yeah. What about the, the vegetables? Would it be, uh, you know, uh, this, this raw vegetables actually, mm -hmm. 
can we cook them? Absolutely. Or? Okay, yes. Th that would get rid of all right. the the you know the, the um, snails or slugs that might actually carry this this parasite. Okay, so let's have some more um, look at your slides and your questions for your survey. Um, okay, so what are we looking at here? Um, so, in order to answer my initial hypothesis that um, a large majority of people do not really know about this disease, I wanted to know first of all whether they had heard about rat lungworm disease. And a majority of people, 82% out of the 150 people, said that they had heard of it, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, what's interesting, if we move to the next slide. Yeah is that a majority of people that had heard of it got their information from the TV or news. So the TV or news, they are reporting about this, and so people get curious about this and they go and read, or...? Uh, right, no, it seems that most people um, are getting their information from the TV or news. It's the news that is actually reporting yes. the, 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 okay, the and information. And then followed by internet and social media. Um, so this is important because maybe it gives us a better idea of where to um, focus our efforts in informing people about this disease. Um, in Hawaii, you mentioned we had the 17 cases last year. Mm -hmm. uh, what about this year? Do we have uh, cases? Yes, there's, uh, I believe there's already been one confirmed case in February. Um, which shows that it's still a problem and it's not really going away. Which parts of the state are more prone to uh, this disease? Right. Is, is it the whole state or the more um, rural areas? Or I believe Big Island is a major place where rat lungworm disease cases are found. Um, I, it's also spread to Maui and Oahu, I think. So and Oahu as right. well. So it affects, I, th I think, everyone on the islands. Okay, what are the, um, let, let's see, um, um, one more slide so we can see. Okay, so this is about how people are knowledgeable about yes. this disease. Yeah. Um, so after asking whether they were familiar with the disease, I asked um, a series of questions including um, what they thought the disease was, how yeah. um, it's transmitted, and so... Um, so are people aware of this? Yes, exactly. So what I found was that um, a majority of people were had little to no knowledge of the disease with um, moderate errors in their responses, and only about 11% of people had um, minor errors or were very accurate in their responses. And it seems that the very knowledgeable was very little, yes. I guess. And, and I, I, I'm looking at this graph, correct me if, you are, uh, if I am um, getting this information wrong, but it seems uh, 61 plus uh, of age are more knowledgeable for the very accurate group. Yes, um, that's what I found. Okay. Um, but for the rest of the, uh, I guess, knowledgeabilities, um, the, they were very generally even in age range. Okay. And what are some uh, suggestions that you may want to give to people to actually uh, be more aware of this disease mm -hmm. and also try and prevent it? Yes, I think just um, inspect your vegetables, produce especially, um, and use running water to wash them thoroughly. And um, I think also just find out more about this disease because it's a pretty important health issue in my opinion. So I think it would be great to um, just uh, spend a few minutes looking it up on the internet or something. Um, pay attention to the TV commercials online because um, they have good information as well. And it seems very easy in terms of right. prevention because yes. it's really about uh, running, uh, washing vegetables with running water. Mm -hmm. So it's really. Uh, thank you, Jenna, for this very nice conversation. We're learning today about uh, this rat lungworm disease, and we're going to take a short break, but we'll be back soon. Stay tuned. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You could talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii. 
called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. And we're back, we're live, we're young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. And uh, today we're talking uh, about this red rat longworm disease with Jenna Kim from Roosevelt High School. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Yeah. And so before our break, uh, you were mentioning about uh, um, the age groups, mm -hmm. these people, who, the, of people who are aware, not so aware, who have knowledge about uh, uh, this disease. And I believe we have one more slide as yes. part of your survey, which breaks them um, yeah, into, okay, this is the... Yes, so um, this is uh, basically a breakdown by source so where most people got their information. And what was interesting is that a lot of the people um, that had little to no information or knowledge about this disease got their information from um, specifically TV or news and um, the internet and social media. And that's in part due to, because most people do in fact get their information from those sources. Um, but what's also interesting is that in the very knowledgeable um, range, most people used a variety of sources um, so maybe they use more than one source to get the information, which is kind of important because then maybe you get a better understanding of rat lung disease. So this um, uh, people regarding the people that are not very aware of this, mm -hmm. who do you think should be uh, bring more awareness of this based on your study? Uh, yes, I think um, it would be great if um, more just everyone in general maybe um, taught, raised awareness about this disease. So um, the TV commercials and the news reports are great. And then um, people just in the community can talk to one another and share about this disease as well. Yeah. How did you uh, find out about this in the first place? In the news or? Uh, yes, in the news. Okay, um, so and then you decided to do this um, right. uh, science project at Roosevelt High School for the for the fair. Mm -hmm. um, you um, got to the uh, state level mm -hmm. in the in the contest. How was uh, uh, being there and sharing these uh, results of your survey and bringing awareness of this disease to the community? How was this experience? Um, it was a great experience. I think being able to talk to um, judges as well as just the general public on the public visitation day um, was great because I could have a conversation with people in the community and see um, what they thought about this disease and um, some people were like, oh, I never knew that, which was a great... Oh, so you had really people that came to you and said, I never knew about yes, it? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, and then they would come to my board and say, oh, what is this? So it was great being able to tell them about it. And um, do you get, uh, did you get any uh, comment or suggestions from any of the judges that particularly struck you or stayed with you? Uh, yes, um, all of the judges gave me really good feedback. Um, they gave me ideas on how to, um, I guess, improve or further continue with this project, um, such as maybe looking into different um, parts of the island or, um, and see how people are aware of this disease on those places. On Oahu, yes. but even the other islands. As well as other islands. Right. Um, how um, was, uh, so this experience basically is a wonderful experience because you get feedback from a variety of people and mm -hmm. experts in the fields and judges. Yes. And now you got feedback. Yeah. And uh, what, are, what do you see uh, ahead for next year? Are you going back with uh, the same project? Are you, are you going to carry out more research about this disease or? Um, so uh, I definitely like to go back to the science fair next year because it's just really fun and I love going through the process of doing a research project. Um, I'm not exactly sure what my topic will be. Um, maybe I'll stick with it, I'm not sure yet, but I definitely like to do it on the side, like rat lungworm disease um, research on the side, whether I do it for the science fair or not, just because I really enjoy this topic. Okay. Um for people who have uh, guidance, for example, one people may think that uh, 
uh, getting rid of the slugs uh, would, uh, you know, for people who, for example, grow vegetables in garden or something, might be actually um, helpful. Uh, what are some methods that people could use to, uh, because would it be possible to eradicate the problem or do you, with the slugs, removing the slugs, or do you think it's, uh, it's more in terms of prevention that really we need to uh, work on this? Um, I think on a smaller scale, such as in your home garden, it is possible to maybe like um, try to eradicate the problem just by setting out traps for slugs or snails, controlling rat populations um, in a small area. But I think on a larger scale, it's not very possible to eradicate rats as a whole or slugs from, or snails. From the whole, yeah. Right, so which makes prevention really important and just knowing about how to prevent it and what to do about it. Uh, let me ask you, is there a cure for this disease? Because so that we can, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe there is a cure for this disease, um, which makes it really a significant issue. But um, I do think they're trying to work to find the possible solutions. Uh, so in terms of um, uh, detection of the disease, mm -hmm. uh, is it easy to detect? Because you mentioned some of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But uh, is it easy for a doctor to actually recognize uh, that the, the you know, nextiveness or something is related to this, or? Um, so, yeah, there, it's actually pretty hard to detect. Um, there's no readily available blood tests for this. Um, so most people have to go based off of symptoms. And so I believe that there's, there might even be some people that um, have not been diagnosed yet, but still have the disease. So just knowing about it is important. The worms, uh, was just reading, can even go into the, the spinal fluids. That's where they live. That's where they uh, yes. reproduce. So it's really, you know, a serious disease that we don't want to get uh, mm -hmm. involved with. And this is really uh, nice to learn from you, you know, uh, about this. Uh, but let me ask you, what do you see uh, for your future ahead? Because this is a very um, current uh, uh, piece of event here mm -hmm. in Hawaii but even in, in the tropics as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see ahead in your future in this medical science field? Uh, yes, I'm really interested in medicine, just um, the human body and diseases and things like that, as well as science as a whole. So in the future, I definitely like to um, just find out more about this field, see if I'm interested in becoming a doctor. And maybe try to pursue yes. a, a career in that. Yeah. Wow, okay. that's exciting. And it's very exciting that you get to work uh, with uh, professionals, the judges at mm -hmm. the state fair, with the community as well, sharing this research. What was the most, uh, um, I guess, the, the, the moment that really, really stu uh, was stuck with you for the, for the science fair? What was the moment that really uh, impressed you the most? Um, so just um, in terms of the journey to get to science fair and doing the project itself, what stuck with me it was um, conducting the survey going with the general public and um, talking to them. Talking to the people. Yes. Yeah. And then at the science fair itself, I really enjoyed talking to the other participants and getting to know um, their projects because everyone has great projects there. And I really enjoy talking to my neighbor and um, seeing what their project was about. And um, most of them I didn't even know anything about. So it was great to learn right, from them. Right, yeah. it's, a, it's a really wonderful and fun experience, as yeah. you mentioned, for the whole community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's the state of Hawaii Science and Engineering Fair. Um, let me ask you uh, some more questions now regarding uh, this uh, uh, lungworm disease, basically. Uh, you know, we mentioned uh, um, prevention. This is um, for worms that get into our bodies and can cause these symptoms and all that. We mentioned about uh, uh, washing vegetables thoroughly. Um, but uh, people might uh, uh, get scared, you know, because mm -hmm. we, they hear about w what we're talking about with this particular disease and everything. Uh, can we still eat vegetables because uh, they are absolutely, you know, needed for yes. our health and everything? Um, yes, you definitely can still eat vegetables. Um, I think you shouldn't be scared of buying local foods at all um, because some people think that maybe it's more possible to get it. But um, I think that as long as you um, are aware of this disease, then you shouldn't be um, scared at all. Um, if you are scared, just find out more about it. 
and then um, you can be more comfortable. Yeah, because we remember that eating fruits and vegetables is very important for our body as well. So just, you know, what are some, um, we have about now uh, two minutes left for our conversation today, uh, but what would be some uh, summary recommendations that you would like to give to our audience today regarding this? Right, I think um, the main takeaway is that rat lung worm disease is a serious issue. Um, it's, I don't believe it's going to go away anytime soon. So just um, wash your vegetables, fruits and vegetables, um, inspect them thoroughly for slugs and snails, and just find out more about this disease um, and raise awareness for it. The rat lung worm disease. Yes. Thank you very much, Jenna. Thank you for Thank being you. with us here. Um, and so you've been watching uh, Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii with Jenna Kim from Roosevelt High School and her brilliant uh, um, project regarding uh, studying awareness about the lung worm disease. Thank you very much for watching us and we'll be back for more next week. Stay tuned.